In this video, I want to talk about Meru's contention management schemes, uh, both within a single access point and also uh, with multiple access points that happen to be on the same channel. So what I want to do is first start with how we do contention adaptation to minimize collisions with one AP and then as a second phase talk about how it extends to multiple APs. So before we get to that, let's start with some core principles. So as you're all probably aware, 802.11 is based on CSMACA, Carrier Sense Multiple Access with Collision Avoidance, which is a wireless variant of CSMACD, which is sort of the core premise for Ethernet. And the standard Ethernet graph, which most students of the art are familiar with, is, looks like this, where the x-axis is the number of contenders, and the y-axis is the channel utilization. Broadly, this equates to throughput. Right? So the idea is that for a few contenders, as the number of contenders increases, the utilization actually goes up, but then it starts to drop off. And this really is the peak. And notice, of course, that the ideal is to flatline at the peak. So let's take a quick digression into you know, why this goes up and then comes down. And then let's look at the impact on 802.11. So as you know, a standard CSMA CD or CA mechanism is based on the following. You sense the carrier. The carrier might be busy for a while. And once the carrier becomes free, Depending upon the protocol, you might want to wait for, or the protocol might mandate that a transmitter waits for some period of time to make sure the channel clears up. And then, using a contention resolution, a multiple access protocol, which is based on backoffs or randomized backoffs, uh, the transmitter picks a certain value, a backoff value, which is a random value from 0 to some contention window. Right? Notice that this is a randomized value that's uniformly distributed from 0 to x. Right? So let's assume that there is a device that picked 4, because let's say it had to go from 0 to 7. It picked 4. So 3, 2, 1, 0. Right? So it waits for 4 slots. If the channel is still free, it starts to transmit. This is the basic idea that governs all carrier sense multiple access protocols. Now the point is the following. Notice that this number, this contention window number, is highly a function of the number of contenders. If you have only one contender, you don't need to back off. You can basically pick zero. If you have, correspondingly at the other extreme, an infinite number of contenders, this value should be infinity. As a specific example, if you have two contenders and they pick values between zero and seven, notice each of them has up to eight choices. And in fact, there is a one-eighth probability of collision, right? Because each device can choose up to uh, you know, eight values, 0 through 7, which means there's a total of 64 combinations, any eight of which will cause collision. Because if they happen to pick the same value, there's a collision. So the probability of collision in this case is one-eighth. So the larger the contention window, lower the probability of collision. But if there aren't multiple transmitters, then longer the time you wait. So there is a trade-off between waiting too long and colliding. And as the number of contenders starts to increase, it's very difficult to predict this value correctly. So all of this is really collision-based lost. And again, what is collision? When there are two devices that happen to pick the same value, that's a collision. Now let's look at 802.11. It turns out the 802.11 graph is actually much steeper. And the reason is, Unlike Ethernet, there is no collision detection in 802.11. If I'm a transmitter, I can transmit and receive at the same time. And even if I could, it's irrelevant because if I'm transmitting to you, the collision at your end is what's important, not the collision at my end. So the way 802.11 works is when a device starts to transmit, it transmits a data frame, and then it expects an acknowledgment from the receiver. So you transmit, you wait for some amount of time, you time out, if the acknowledgment didn't come in, then you declare a collision and you move on. Essentially, you retry. Right? So notice that the amount of time that it takes to resolve a collision is a heck of a lot longer in 802.11 than it is in Ethernet, where you would detect a collision right here. So the penalty for collisions is higher, and hence, as the number of collisions start to increase, the throughput starts to drop off. This tells us something really critical. 
it tells us that it is crucial, even more crucial in 802.11 than in Ethernet in terms of picking up this contention window. So the WMM standard, which is uh, an enhancement to the basic IEEE 802.11 standard, actually allows or provides the infrastructure for access points to advertise these contention window parameters. In fact, it has four parameters that it allows an AP to advertise. This initial wait time, so originally this was called a distributed interframe spacing, and since then with WMM, depending upon the class of service, you might have different amount of wait time. So for the purpose of this discussion, let's just call it an initial wait time, and this value is adjustable. For those of you more technically inclined, go look up AIFS, which is an arbitrary interframe spacing, and that maps to this initial wait time. So once you pick this initial wait time, you pick a value, again this randomized value, between something called zero to contention window minimum, and for every subsequent retry, you double this to the point where you reach zero to CW max. And once you succeed with WMM, you might not just transmit one frame, you might actually transmit a sequence of frames for a length of time that is called TXOP. To summarize then, WMM allows you to customize four parameters. This initial wait time governed by this AIFS, CW min and CW max, which for the purposes of this discussion, let's just think of it as contention window and TXOP, which is the transmit opportunity, which is nothing but the length of time that you transmit once you get to win a contention run. The point here is, if you know how to adapt the contention window to the amount of over-the-air traffic, you can really re reduce the amount of loss. So Meru, over a period of seven years, with a lot of uh, you know, research and several you know, patent-pending algorithms, has figured out a way to effectively uh, estimate the number of on-the-fly contenders, right? the number of devices that at any given microsecond are effectively contending for the air, and on that basis, customize the CW min and CW max. By customizing these values and advertising them over the air, we are able to nearly flatline. I would not say we have flatlined it. That would be utopia for us. We have nearly flatlined the aggregate utilization as the number of devices goes up. And this is something that's a dramatic differentiator for us because pretty much everybody else in the industry sort of tops off at some point. So this is one very significant aspect where we are using contention window adaptation, what we call uh, adaptation of the WMM parameters in order to minimize collisions. Step one. Now let's get to step two. All of this stuff works in the, within the context of a single access point. Now, we might have multiple devices that are contending. Some might be contending more, or some might need to be suppressed more than others. So how do you do that? If you go to the video that talks about virtual port, you will notice that each of these devices in a Meru system is allocated its own virtualized access point, what we call a BSS ID. And these values are advertised on a per BSS ID or virtualized access point basis. Effectively, what it does is it allows us to take these parameters and customize them on a per device basis. So if you have four devices, you have the ability to say device one can you know, get a low contention value, while device two will have a high one if you want to give preferential access to device one over device two. The ability to manipulate these values on a per device basis is unique to Meru and is one of the key ways in which we are able to replicate switch-like behavior. 